This is Susan Lushaz with DebugYourHealth.com. I'm here this evening with my husband. We've got our kids in bed and um, we're just going to do what a lot of couples do at night and check in on our dental infections tonight. Um, Manuel has a, an appointment with the dentist tomorrow to potentially get an ozone injection. Let me give a brief history of his tooth number nine. Um, it was originally a root canal for many, many years. He swore he never had any symptoms. Um, we finally, me and a couple practitioners, strong arm armed him into pulling the tooth um, and putting in a bridge. <clears throat> and when he pulled the tooth, all of a sudden he said his lower back got better. Um, I noticed his brain fog went away. He did twice as much housework. He had super energy and he was just functioning like I've never seen him function before. So. Um, the tooth he didn't think was bothering him, but apparently it, was, it had created symptoms that he didn't even notice anymore. So he got the tooth pulled, he got a bridge put in, um, everything seemed to be fine. Um, we unfortunately then later realized that his bridge crossed the midline, so it crossed the cranial midline, which basically fuses two bones together, and that can also create all sorts of problems in people. Um, so we realized that was a mistake, and then he <clears throat> ended up with a phimosis infection, which we kind of traced back to potentially being caused by the tooth number nine as well. So we went back and looked again at tooth number nine for infection, and we found that it was still infected about six months or seven, seven, eight, seven months after he got it pulled, and the bridge was installed, that that area where it had been pulled from was infected. And I tested him for infection immediately after he got the tooth pulled and it was testing fine, but I never thought to look at it again until he got this other infection. Then I thought to look back at the tooth again and then sure enough it was testing infected. So I sent him back to the dentist to get an ozone injection here. Of course he told me he was fine, he didn't need it, it wasn't infected. I sent him anyway and uh, he came back saying that his bridge felt a lot more stable and uh, he was just feeling better again, <laughs> even though, again, he was saying he had no symptoms to begin with, and in hindsight, he was saying, oh yeah, I did have symptoms. So um, tomorrow he's going, he went for two ozone injections, um, tooth number nine, which is no longer there, and tomorrow he's supposed to go for the third one. So before he goes there tomorrow, I just wanna check in uh, with him and see if I think it's still infected, see if I th still think there's anything there. So that's thing number one I'm going to look for. And number two, I want to check again his midline uh, because he does have this bridge fusing these two bones together. Um, before, previously I had tested him and he was having problems with his midline. So I sent him to an osteopath for that. And uh, she found some other stuff and, and worked on a bunch of things. And basically now she thinks his bridge is fine. She thinks it's not bothering his midline. And she thinks he doesn't need to have that midline bridge uh, replaced. So I'm kind of curious to see if I come to the same finding she does or if I find something different. Um, so those are the two things I'm going to look at with him. And then we're going to switch and then he's going to look at some stuff on me related to my dental. So let's start with his tooth number nine. So he's going to hold um, tooth number nine. Or actually, why don't, you, why don't we start with just not hold tooth number nine. Why don't we just start with the strong points on the temple and put up your fingers. One, two, three, hold super strong on the temple and the other temple. Okay, one, two, three, hold. Real strong on that as well. Why don't we try a tooth in the back that we know is not infected? One, two, three, hold. Yeah, pretty strong there. Okay, now let's go for tooth number nine, not across the midline, on, on one side of the midline. Okay, one, two, three, hold. Super strong, actually. Let's go for number eight. One, two, three, hold. And again to number nine, I just want to compare, one, two, three, hold. Pretty strong on number nine. I'm not seeing anything there. Um, what I'm gonna have him do is put on a glove on his uh, left hand, which probably doesn't, no, it's just fit. And <clears throat> I'm gonna have him go in his mouth on number nine above the bridge. So he's got, he's got the bridge and he's got the tooth and I'm gonna have him go above the, where the bridge is because that's where the to the roots of the tooth were pulled, that's where the potential cavitation could be. I'm gonna have him kind of feel up in there. One, two, three, hold. Pretty strong. Why don't you move around a little bit? Can you move higher or to the right or left? One, two, three, hold. 
and I'm gonna now have him, I don't see anything there. Okay, one, one more time. One, two, three, hold. Pretty strong there as well. I'm gonna have him go on the underside in the hard plate behind behind that tooth number nine, where the tooth number nine needs to be. One, two, three, hold. Also really strong in there. I'm not seeing anything there. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna have him, I'm gonna look at the midline. I'm gonna have him take his glove off. <clears throat> Actually, I guess you don't even need your hands. I'm gonna just um, touch his midline up here. Just see, one, two, three, hold. Pretty strong. I'm gonna just kinda go down his nose. One, two, three, hold. One more time. He's one, two, three, hold. Still pretty strong on the nose, and now I'm going to just go right in here and see if we can see anything. One, two, three, hold. Pretty strong there as well. Why don't you take your finger and hold your midline across here? One, two, three, hold. And now hold it back here. One, two, three, hold. So I'm just trying to compare um, how strong he is just holding it somewhere that's not a midline. Maybe don't hold it across these bones, just hold the upper, upper um, in there. One, two, three, hold. Pretty strong, and go back to your midline. One, two, three, hold. Pretty strong in the midline. I can't, I can't make a good case, um, I can't make a good case about midline problems anymore. Uh, when I had previously tested him for his midline, um, he was testing really weak on his midline and really strong kind of everywhere else that I looked. So I don't see, I don't see an obvious um, infection. I don't see an obvious uh, midline problem either. So, so we'll see what happens at the dentist tomorrow with him if she finds the same thing or, or if she decides to give an, him an injection. I think he reported that after his first ozone injection for this recent infection, he definitely felt better. And after the second one, he kind of felt the same. He wasn't really mm -hmm. necessarily feeling any better, but I didn't test him before that second injection, so I don't know how he was testing um, at home. So I just want to test him before the third, and I'm not seeing anything. So my guess is hopefully she won't give him the injection. She'll come to the same conclusion I did. Or if she does, I'm guessing he probably won't feel much better uh, than he already does. So now we're going to switch. I'm going to sit. He's going to stand. And... Um, we're going to look at me. Um, I have blow my nose for a minute. I have four cavitation uh, sites from my wisdom teeth. Those are the only um, <clears throat> teeth that I'm missing, or the only teeth that I have root canals on, or I don't have any root canals, and those are the only teeth I'm missing. And I had cavitation surgery. I guess about eight months ago and I ended up septic and all kinds of problems but um, after I did a, after the cavitation surgery I ended up with a series of ozone injections and after that I was testing clean of infections at least we couldn't see anything and we haven't looked now for probably a couple of months um, for infections on me and it's difficult because um, if there's a little bit of infection in there, you might not see it with with our home uh, home energy muscle testing. It might be just hard to find, and, and it's hard to find with any method in that case. And um, sometimes these things can take a few months to kind of build up to the level that they become detectable. So at least for a year, um, if not 18 months after cavitation surgery, I just want to kind of check in and see if anything's developed, developed or developing in any of those areas. And if we see anything, then I'll make an appointment for myself to go to the dentist um, and check that out. So we're just going to go through my cavitations here. That's item number one on my list. And then item number two is that I recently uh, I guess about right um, about a month ago, I had my frenum cut. Uh, I didn't have a speech problem or anything. I breastfed fine, but I um, decided my frenum was too tight. I could feel that it was tight, and I, and you know I'd heard stories about people feeling a lot better and people detoxing better, less pressure on the central nervous system if you cut your frenum. So I got my frenum cut, and I definitely felt a lot better. Um, and so now I just I also want to just try muscle testing on, on my frenum and just see if I, if we can see anything there. My sense, my intuition from the frenum is that 
I felt better. I feel like my whole jaw has kind of come forward. Now, in, the, in an adult, it's, it's not anything I don't think that we could notice. It's probably like a half a millimeter or some very small number. Um, but it definitely feels different. And I'm kind of thinking now that maybe it needs to have another cut. Um, I didn't have it done with an oral surgeon. I had it done with a dentist. And when you have it done with a dentist, there's only so much he can cut. He can't cut as much as an oral surgeon is able to. So I'm suspicious that maybe I need another cut on the frenum. And so I just want to see if we can test for that as well. So let's go for my cavitations first. So I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna hold in here where I have absolutely no problems that I know of. One, two, three, hold. And then I'm gonna hold back here. One, two, three, hold. Strong, same. Same. Okay. One, two, three, hold. It's even stronger. One, two, three, hold. It's very strong. One, two, three, hold. Also very strong. Okay, I'm going to go back here because um, number 16 on the upper left is where I had the septic infection. So I'm just going to kind of feel around in here. I want to just check and see if we can see anything with the sinus area. I'm going to just do a couple of points in here. So let me do up here first. One, two, three, hold. Strong. One, two, three, hold. Even stronger. One, two, three, hold. Very strong. And I'm going to actually go ahead and put on some gloves here, <clears throat> or a glove, and I'm going to go inside my mouth as well. While we're doing it, I figure I just want to be as thorough as possible and make sure we don't miss anything because we only do this, um, at least on me, I'm only doing it now once every couple of months or so, so I just want to make sure I don't miss anything if there is anything to see. So I'm going to go for number 16, for, or actually I'll start with number 1. One, two, three, hold. Very strong. One, two, three, hold. Very strong. One, two, three, hold. Also strong. One, two, three, hold. Strong. And I'm going to go for a couple more areas around number 16 again for the same reason. One, two, three, hold. Very strong. One, two, three, hold. Awesome. Very good. And um, now I want to look at the um, look at the frenum. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold the top of my tongue first as kind of a baseline. I don't um, and just see what that feels like, and then I'm going to actually hold the frenum. So I'll do the top first. One, two, three, hold. Okay. And now I'm going to suction my tongue to the top of my mouth and I'm going to hold my finger on my frenum. One, two, three, hold. That's so strong. It's still strong than that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually hold um, now the sides of my frenum and towards the back and just see. One, two, three, hold. A little weaker. A little weaker. Okay. I'm going to try one more. I want to, um, instead of suctioning my t tongue to the top of my mouth, I'm just going to hold the tongue up and touch the frenum. One, two, three, hold. That is not quite as strong. Okay. Um, yeah, so my sense there is that, so you're saying it's not quite as strong. Yeah, it's not completely weak, but it's not quite as strong. Not as quite as strong. So previous test point. Okay, so potentially a a question mark there on the front. I'm um, I'm about <clears throat> I guess I'm about only about four weeks post surgery from the first uh, front uh, cut. So I guess we'll maybe test again in another probably three or four weeks. That'll make me at two months. I think they don't like to operate. Um, sooner than two months anyway so I think what we'll do is just see how this develops and then test it test that for sure again in another couple of months